Hey guys and gals, Danny Boy here, and today I have the OnePlus 8 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20, and in this particular video, we're going to be talking about the displays on these phones. I think this is going to be a really interesting discussion. Both of these phones are kind of known to have uh, good displays, especially I think the OnePlus 8 Pro here, but let's talk about this and see you know, kind of how this, you know, how these two phones compare. Now we're here uh, going into the summer of 2021. Okay, so, you know, the 8 Pro here has been out over a year, the Note 20 almost a year. So that's kind of where we're at age-wise. Now, of course, the 8 Pro right now can be had for 699 bucks from OnePlus. And then, of course, the Galaxy Note 20 here from Samsung. We're still at a full retail price of $9.99 at the filming of this video. Now, I have seen the Note 20 here for, you know, around $800 bucks, uh, sometimes when it's on sale or whatever. So it can be had for less, but bottom line is the, the 8 Pro here can be had for a lesser price in most cases. Okay, so all that being uh, said, you know, let's talk about the displays. So, our OnePlus 8 Pro has a 6.7 inch AMOLED panel, almost a 6.8 inch here. It's a very tall form factor, so you kind of have a tall looking display here. Uh, this is a curved display, so you got these curves kind of dipping down the side there, as you can see. Uh, it's pretty modest on the curves. It kind of reminds me of the Note 20 Ultra, if you've seen that phone. It's kind of along those lines, I think. Um, if you're not into curved phones, which I usually am not, um, I have not found the 8 Pro here to be a problem with these curves whatsoever. They're just not that big that it's been an issue for me. Accidental touches, yeah, I've gotten some accidental touches. It might happen like once a week, uh, but it's not a big enough deal that I'm like, whoa, I can't use this phone or anything like that. It's just kind of not that often. So, um it definitely looks sweet having the curved display. Um, so here, the phone unlocked, you saw it had an in, in display fingerprint reader here. So that's good, like that. It's a very accurate one, very good one. So unlocking the phone here, we see we have a hole punch cutout for our front facing camera and they've put it off to the left side. I definitely like that. I think that's a good placement. I think that definitely beats the old pop-up camera that we saw on the OnePlus 7 Pro or even the center-mounted one that was on the 7T. I think it's better than both of those kind of having it off to the side here. Okay, so what's great about this phone? Well, there's really two things when talking about the display that really stick out about this phone. And first, that you have a Quad HD display here. So Quad HD 513 PPI. Okay, so that's really high on the PPI account. Nice to have a Quad HD display. And when you consider this for the 699 price tag that this phone is now, it's quite incredible. I mean, that you get this high quality of a display for that cost, okay? And it's not just that. We also have 120 Hertz refresh rate on this display. So it's got the best of both worlds here high PPI, high refresh rate, and that just gives it a buttery, smooth, even faster feeling experience. Just looks really good. Um, really like that. The only thing with this display that I have not been 100% um, impressed with is the brightness. It gets bright, but it doesn't get quite as bright as I would like. I mean, that's maximum brightness. Normally, I determine, you know, if a phone is really bright, 
when I turn it on maximum brightness, is it too bright to look at? Can I use it inside? See, this phone on maximum brightness, I could still use. It's a little on the bright side, but I could use it inside. It looks brighter in the camera than it really is. Um, I could use this inside maximum brightness. So that means to me, it's not quite as bright as I would like. Um, that would be my only thing on this display that I wish was a little bit better. And that's just for outdoor use. Like if I'm on vacation shooting videos or photos, I like this, the display to be as bright as possible. So it's a little not quite as bright as I would like. I got to kind of tell it like it is. But otherwise, this display is just a terrific, awesome display on a smartphone. And as you can see here turned off, we do have an always on display on this phone. So this is running Android 11, got the always on display there. So that's really good. So now let's kind of switch gears here and talk about the Note 20. So the Note 20 here has a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED panel, okay? It does have an in-display fingerprint reader. I have it turned off because I found it to not be that accurate, unfortunately. So I don't really use it. Um, and my, you know, display comparison here, there is no comparison. Uh, the 8 Pro just has a much better in-display fingerprint reader. Uh, but that's besides the point. So unlocking the phone, we do have a flat panel here so if you like a completely flat display i think the note 20 here is a great option um, as you can see viewing angles are terrific they're very flagship they're good on the 8 pro here too because i didn't show that um, they're slightly better on the note 20 uh, as you can see there but they're pretty good on the, the 8 pro but very, very, very high quality display here on the Samsung. Hole punch cutout, they did put it in the center there for the front facing camera. I don't like that. I wish it was off to the side like my Galaxy S10e had. That was much better when it was off to the side. If they're going to put it in the middle, I want it to be a teardrop. I don't want it to have a little bit of display above the cutout because then to me it kind of becomes an eyesore. I mean I have a hard time getting past that cutout. I usually go into developers option and run the blackout that kind of blacks out the area around it because I just have a hard time with it. I don't know what it is but Probably my least favorite placement for a hole punch cutout is there in the center. Okay, so it is what it is here. Some people aren't going to care about that. Uh, and Samsung also took away, you used to be able to black it out in Android 10. When they upgraded this to 11, they took that option away. And I don't know why they did that because I always use the phone with that blackout. But besides the point, we got a 393 PPI here. So this is a 1080p display. It's not quad HD. Now, you might think, ooh, that, that's not good. You know, that, that's kind of a big deal. Not really, actually. It, it's still a very rock solid display. I, you know, I would think that moving between this phone to the Quad HD on the 8 Pro would be a big difference. It's really not. I mean, this one is so good otherwise, well, for the most part, that you really don't even notice it a whole lot. It's almost like you know, the, the 8 Pro having the 513 PPI, it definitely looks sweet, don't get me wrong, but it's just an added layer of sweetness. It's kind of like both displays are sweet, but this one is really sweet on the 8 Pro, if that makes any sense. So they're both really good. I could use, you know, either one of these as my daily driver for a year straight and be perfectly fine. 
text still looks sharp, even though it's 393 PPI. I just, I think it's perfectly good. Now, this phone is 60 hertz, and a lot of people didn't like that uh, for the refresh rate being 60 hertz for the price tag of 999 bucks, and this phone still is 999 bucks full retail price from Samsung. So that, I think, is more of a concern than anything else, than the, the lower PPI. It still feels good because you have the Snapdragon 865 Plus in this phone. You have a screaming processor. It still feels fast and smooth. It's just not quite as buttery smooth as the 8 Pro. But is there a big difference? I would say not a big difference. There's a difference, but it's not, especially if you've never had a 120 hertz display, I don't even think you're going to realize what you're missing. Um, it's not that big a deal. Because this phone is so fast, the refresh rate feels higher. It feels like if a 75 hertz display existed, that's what it feels like. It feels faster than 60, but not quite 90. Um, because the processor is so fast. Um, so... You know, the, the concern, though, the concern becomes 1080p, 60 hertz for 999 bucks. That's the concern. If this phone was 799 or 699 like the 8 Pro is now, there wouldn't be any concern about it. But at that price tag, if you're going to pay full retail price, it's a hard thing to get past okay but if you can get this phone on sale say for 800 bucks or 700 bucks even i think it's perfectly fine perfectly great display for that money let's talk about brightness here real quick so if i max out the brightness of course you get that warning there which i don't like that is really too bright for me to use inside. It's just a little bit too bright. Um, I, My personal take on it is this display looks brighter on the Note 20. I don't know what the technical numbers are, but this looks brighter. Uh, my experience has been as far as brightness goes, I definitely prefer the Note 20 here. Um, it just looks brighter. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't know what the technical numbers are. Uh, they could be the same. I don't know, but this one feels a little bit brighter in my opinion. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at there. Uh, so both good displays, you know, you just got to factor in the price tag because this phone costs so much for kind of medium range specs on the display even though it's a great display um you have to factor that in so like i said i don't think i would pay a thousand dollars for this phone in the summer of 2021 but if i could get it for 800 or 700 i would probably definitely consider this phone over the 8 pro if i was buying a new phone right now so that's kind of where my thoughts are at, guys, between these two phones. But either way, I think you're in good shape. We do have always on displays here on the Note 20, and we got a lot of customization too. So that's something else to keep in mind. But a big difference is the in display fingerprint reader, definitely way better on the 8 Pro. So, guys, those are my overall thoughts here. As always, if you're enjoying my videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Of course, hitting that thumbs up button there helps out as well. But for now, guys, peace out.